Reaper is the most powerful DAW on the market, in my opinion. And that's because it gets out of the way of the designer. Whatever they think can happen quickly and flexibly. And that's because everything is customizable. That is also one of the downfalls of Reaper. It's so customizable that initially it's very difficult to get set up. That's why I've created a whole set of macros, a whole set of um, scripts, so that if you're coming from Pro Tools, you can, within minutes, easily be able to get into Reaper and edit. If you look down at the video, um, you can go to the website um, and find out where you can get all of this stuff so that you can be up and running quickly. But today, I just want to go through some of the key features that makes it amazingly the best DAW, in my opinion. So number one, actions. The actions list um, in Reaper is of every single action in the whole program. And that includes preferences. And it's great, it has this little filter thing here so you can just type in, it's like a search, preferences. If I could spell, yeah. So preferences, that's that's in the actions list. That's, you know, some of these drop down menus, it's amazing. Um, you can do things like reverse um, and, and be able to reverse items or split or, uh, you know, normalize. Like everything is in this action list. And what's great is if you look at these little um, keyboard shortcuts here, all of these are customizable. So you, if you like to normalize and you want that to be your in button, it's as easy as that. Now it's in. So great. It customizes exactly to the way you want to work. So that is the actions list. Macros. Macros are a list of items that are put together. So if you wanted to normalize and then cut and then do a few other things and fade and whatever, you can do it all in one button. It's amazing. Um, here's an example of uh, a macro that I have of cutting and separating. Um, and it's four actions put together. It's basically looking where the mouse cursor is. It selects the item under it and then cuts it. This is super powerful. It sounds easy, but if you think about it, the mouse cursor right here, it looks to where it is, and then you can edit clips based on where the mouse cursor is. That's crazy. So I can put fades based on where the mouse is without having to click. It makes editing amazing. I can take fades away. Like, it's whatever you want to do. Uh, macros are very powerful. Effects per clip. So both the track has effects and you can add in, you know, an EQ or whatever you're, you would like. That can be on the track or it could be on the clip itself. So if I want a Fab Pro Q, uh, here we go. It's on the clip and it can be automated on the clip per clip. That is awesome. It's revolutionary in my mind, coming from Pro Tools. Speed of pulling up an effect. So in Pro Tools, where you have to go into the thing and go through a list and go f find what sub thing it is, maybe you can shortcut it. I've seen that recently. But that's, I mean, you would have to shortcut every single plugin to get it really quickly, which you would never do. Here, genius. It's just utter genius in my mind in that you can just type it in so if I want Mondo Mod there it is if I want Fab Pro Q there it is it's that quickly it's it's amazing how quick you can pull up an effect and by doing it quickly it makes it more creative because it's getting out of your way and if you think of it it can happen quicker built-in features like reverse instead of bringing in an audio suite and a button and then clicking on the track and then press the button no nah. just a button click reverse it's in the program normalize a button normalized it's great also um clips can be so this clip is actually a stereo clip 
you can make it down mix to mono. You can choose the channel, left, right. If it's a multi-channel, you can choose which channel you want. Uh, you could choose the stereo of, of any channel you want. This is a great feature, especially for games where sometimes you want it stereo, sometimes you want it mono, and you do it all the time. A little down mix button, and I should really shortcut it. That, that's amazing. Tracks are channel agnostic, meaning, look at, this is a stereo track. We've got a mono track here, and we've got a multi-channel track, all in one track. Sorry, clips, all in one track. It, it's great to not be put in a box. It doesn't matter. It just sees it as an audio file. And if you wanted to make this, you know, stereo, you make it stereo. If you want to only pick the left channel, you got the left channel. Just great flexibility. Love that. Scripting. Scripting is huge. Now, it is a little technical, uh, which can be an issue sometimes, but um, with my stuff, all the stuff I'm showing like are in my set of macros and set of scripts that you can download. For instance, renaming. The renaming feature is, is awesome. I wrote a script that basically does a uh, rename and then um, increments if you want the increment. If you don't want it, you just leave it blank and it doesn't increment. And what's great is, um, for instance, Pro Tools, let's say this is what, this is the example I had. In Pro Tools, if you selected that and renamed, it would rename this first track. This would be one, this would be two, this three, and this four, which to me doesn't make sense. Like, if I made a linear session, then I would want this top one to be one, this to be two, this to be three, this to be four. You don't have the option to select that in Pro Tools. But in this, if I named it Cool 0102, you know, it named it renamed it and it did it in order. So that's that's through scripting that you can do that. Um, in Pro Tools, there's you know memory locations, and I had to script in um, to do it like Pro Tools, where it's dot one enter. Well, usually it's dot one dot but I made it dot, uh, dot whatever, enter. So you can go to any location. And I even made a feature where if you named these um, cool item, you can go search by the name too. So you can do the ID or by the name, which is just a little cool feature. Um, an awesome feature, pop-up effects. So. You, I saw, I showed you how bringing up an effect is super easy. Well, you can make it easier by bringing up an effect with a preset, with a click of a button. And I use um, Fab EQ a lot. So I, and sometimes I just want it with a low pass. That's like a big thing I do. Always um, have have a preset open would be very nice. So with a click of a one button, I got my EQ with a preset already ready so I can just go like that. So awesome. And let's say you wanted a chain of effects. You could also do that. A chain of, let's say, three effects. Boom, one button, three effects, all with different presets. That's pretty powerful. That, that is pretty awesome. Um, also, in another video I had, I have a renaming based on an Excel spreadsheet. So because it's a scripting language, it can look for outside files, bring in information and do things in a session. It's, it's incredibly powerful. Exporting. So the way that it exports is also very cool. So let's say I had these three files, or sorry, these four files, and I want to export. Um, it has presets, which is so great. You can have a preset for your um, normally used information. So I just do my stereo preset because all of these were stereo. And um, within Reaper, you can tell it where to store all of these render sessions. And unlike Pro Tools, where you have to go keep on like, oh, find where to put this crap. 
Like you don't have to do that with Reaper. It does it automatically, which is brilliant. Um, and you can name things by the item name, by the region, by the project, like whatever you would like. I named everything by the item, which is the clip. You would call it in Pro Tools. You render it, which is offline. And this button is amazing. Show in folder. I love this button. It brings you exactly to your files. Oh, these were some old files. So I brought in these four files that I just rendered, and then you can just copy it. And if you had on your side panel here exactly where your WISE project or whatever, FMOD, um, you can drag it right into um, those folders and put it in the game. It's I love the feature of this button. It just makes it easy to find things and, and move on. So exporting is super powerful. I've saved the best for last subsessions. So subsessions are a way that you can organize um, your sessions. And uh, for instance, let's say these few things um, are my are my sounds for the game. I, I have four assets for the game. And let's say it was many, many files. Well, I can bring in this whole um, folder, which is basically like going to a submix, put it through a subsession. So it's subsessioning it at all, um, which is a script I made. And let's just bring the end of this subsession over here. Okay. So now I brought over this whole folder and save that. It made it surround because I do a lot of surround, but I have buttons over here that make it uh, stereo. And then back in your main session, now it's just this beautiful little file. And then all you would have to do is put in some silence like that and then export. Well, you would want to rename it and then export. And there you go. And what's great is, so let's say you came back to this and you want, oh, revision three, it doesn't sound good in the game. You can just double click, go into here. You can put a little fade on there, save it, go back to your main session. And it, it did the fade, kept the name. So great. So all you would have to do is export that. That's, it's, for organizational purposes, subsessions is amazing. So you could have a huge session here and just lots of subsessions um, and that would be your organization and it would make this session not very big and whenever you needed one of these little things, you could just click on it and it goes into the session with all of your files. It's so great. And, oh, the great thing is in exporting this stuff, like let's say I put a fade here. When you export that in Reaper, it puts the fade in the file. So you don't have to render it again. It, it puts that fade in there. So you could do things, this is what's so great. You can look to see exactly what you're doing. You could normalize all these files. You could put fades on it if you would like, um, and then export. And it's all non-destructive. So you could go back here and change this and then, and, and the changes will just be affected here. So let's say I change this, put a little fade on it, save that. There it is. And it's, it's still normalized because I normalized it from before. Super powerful, amazing for game audio, but I could see implications for doing film and having your splits um, be one session that then you can go into multiple subsessions to get to the actual file if you needed to change it. But it makes your one session super clean. Um, so these are just some key features. It's like the tip of the iceberg of how powerful Reaper can be and why I think it is the most powerful uh, DAW on the market. And keep in tune, go to my website, protoolstoreaper.com where you can look for um, all the macros that I have, all the scripts that I have, um, all the tutorials that are coming um, so that you can make the transition easily from Pro Tools to Reaper. Thanks.